Hello, it's Stuart here at HobbyKing.com here on a very cold and very, actually very windy uh, autumn day. Here to give you a Mod Tech Monday on a fling that you know and love. It's this one here, the Durafly slow, slow Poke. Now, for this Mod Tech Monday, uh, I've done a few little modifications, things that you can do uh, to the model, very simple things out of the box, just to improve the overall uh, efficiency and uh, performance of the model in flight. Now, what we're gonna do, I'll talk you uh, through briefly uh, the mods that I've done here as you see them. One of them, one or two of them are probably quite evident already. And then uh, we'll take you back to my workshop and uh, I'll talk you through how I made those modifications. So let's start with uh, what I've done. Well, looking around model, you can see it looks pretty standard. The first thing you'll probably note, I've added a uh, clear cockpit, uh, winds oh, sorry, windscreen, because why not? It just helps it look that much cooler. The rigging wire has been replaced with the same uh, flexible, uh, what do you call it, um, elastic string that we used on the Gloucester Gladiator when we modified that. The wheels have had some changes to them just to help them run much, much smoother. I'll go over that in a minute. Uh, it comes with a very nicely detailed um, cylinder head, uh, cylinder heads, uh, dummy cylinder heads. Uh, they have been improved and I'll talk you through that. Also the tail wheel that you see down here, uh, there's been a small modification to that. So what I'm going to do, like I said, and I will preface this to say, that we are going to go to my workshop now this is a workshop it's not a studio lighting's not the best but hopefully um you'll be able to see from the shots that we've got inside the workshop uh in detail the modifications i've made and then we'll come back and sign off for this video so this is the mod tech monday for the uh durafly slowpoke let's go to the workshop now and i'll talk you through in details the changes and the mods that i made to the slowpoke All right, so here we are at the workbench and I'm gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna talk you through each point that um, I've done for this uh, Mod Tech Monday on the uh, Slowpoke. This is the uh, horizontal stab that you see. And I'm gonna do everything straight out of the box, starting with one of my first tips, which is using our clear foam glue, is to reinforce the hinge lines. Now you will do this for both the elevator and the aileron and the rudder too. And what you want to do, in the manual we tell you to flex the, um, the uh, hinges just to uh, loosen them up a bit. And that's all well and good, but on some models there's no additional reinforcement along the hinge line and this foam hinge can come weak over time. So a way to fix that is with our clear foam glue, as you see there. And I'll show you how you do it. So you just get, a, get your glue and you run it all the way along the hinge line like so squeezing as you go just to make sure make sure it gets into the hinge now it's going to be a bit messy to start with but don't worry about that because i've got a tip to uh to tidy that up and that's squeezed in if you can see you don't need a great deal i'll get a little bit closer it's quite stout this glue so you really got to squeeze but if you can see there there is some glue in there now to tidy that up you get something like this, just a lollipop stick. I have children, so I have many of these in the workshop. And very simply, you just put it in there. It's curved at the tip, and you run that along, and that smooths out that glue really, really nicely. So any of that rough application is now completely smoothed away. And you might just be able to catch it in the light, but what that's done now, that's spread all into the, uh, the foam hinge, and once that's dry, that'll be a nice, flexible, reinforced foam hinge. I recommend this for everything, uh, every control service, not only on this model, but on many other models aside. Uh, now, you just wanna let that dry overnight, and then you can get on with the assembly of the model. So that's the first tip. <music> Thank you. 
Now, next tip on the uh, slowpoke. Um, out of the box, uh, on some of them, we've seen that uh, these dummy cylinder heads, as nice as they look, and they do look very, very nice, as you can see there, and they really finish off the model nicely. They're actually uh, quite loose out of the box. You don't want that in flight, because that's going to be vibrating around all over the place. So the next tip I'm going to show you is how to uh, firm these up. But first, we need to remove the cap. So the cow is off, there's those dummy cylinder heads, looking really rather nice, um, but they are, they are loose. Now we want to solve that, and you see here, see how with these uh, little lugs, they're kept in place, and with this bracket, all we're going to do is actually put some hot glue along this part here, and fill here and here with hot glue, and that will really, really firm up these. So I've got my Hobby King... Uh, battery powered hot glue gun, you're going to let that warm up, there it is, in the light. There it is, you're going to let that warm up, uh, it's 3 s powered of course, and then we'll put the glue into the cow. Okay, so what you can see now hopefully, is that they're still just as detailed, but they are rock solid now, they are not going anywhere. What you do have to do is make sure that you don't put so much glue that the motor can't turn, but the motor is turning just fine. So, on with the next mod. Okay, here's the next mod. What you see in front of me, hopefully in focus, is a piece of silicon tubing and a washer. Now they go to help solve the slop issue on the towel bill. I can get this into focus here. So, um, out of the box, there's quite a bit of play. You see that back and forth, up and down the shaft there? So we want to avoid that, and we avoid that by using uh, some silicon and that washer just to pack out that space there. So let me try and change the angle and uh, we'll give you a better demonstration of that. But the first thing to do is remove this little C-clip, or circlip, sorry. So we will do that right now. Okay, so we've zoomed in and as you can see as standard, there's quite a bit of slide. I will explain on my nails, you're seeing some blue. It's a little bit of paint there, so apologies for that. So uh, yes, quite loose there. So what we want to do is just take that circlip away. I've already eased it off. So that goes away like so. Then, um, the silicon that I mentioned, here it is, this is just uh, fuel tubing, silicon fuel tubing, if you can see it there. I've just cut a small bit that you can see here, and you just want to slide that onto the shaft, like so, all the way to the bend, just like that. Then that small washer that uh, we talked about before, pick that up, it's always a little fiddly, but there we go. Slide that on. Now the washer you need, because you don't want the silicon rubbing it against the wheel, because it will slow the wheel down. Then you just push the wheel back on. You want to push it nice and tight, so it's just up by the ridge. Then you get your circlip, and then, always a little bit fiddly. So, that circlip is on, there we go, the circlip is now, is a bit fiddly. But what you see now, is that wheel, once you adjust the silicon on the back, what you see now, is that wheel is barely moving wait for the focus what you see now is that wheel is barely moving at all if it is still a little bit loose like this you can always put a little bit more silicon but that is a much much better uh, more stable tail wheel and a worthwhile modification okay so next mod is all about the undercarriage now listen to this it's running kind of smooth but if you notice it's actually very loose and wobbly um, now this is not because the collet's not done up tight enough it's actually because if you can see here see how much that wobbles on the shaft it's because the wheel hole, the hole in the center, is too, is too big for the axle of the landing gear. However, that is a very easy fix using our old friend heat shrink. Now, obviously I've got our Turnergy heat shrink there, as you can see. Now, you just cut it to side, slide it over. You want to make sure you don't uh, get any on the flat that's there for the uh, collet. And then, of course, what do you do with heat shrink? You shrink it with heat. So here we go. We're doing it on this side. See if I can do this all in camera without speeding up. And then with that done, make sure you heat it all the way around. You don't want any bumps left because it does want to be smooth. So there we go. And now for prosperity, I'm going to put another uh, slightly oversized uh, piece on. Slide that on. Get it in the same position again. Again, you want to make sure you heat it in uh, both sides or all sides so it shrinks down evenly now i'm not worried that it's red i'm not worried that it's going a little bit black with the uh 
with the burning here that doesn't bother me because it's all going to be hidden by the wheel now you want to let that cool down a bit and it's quite cold in here now so it's going to blow on that let it cool down because then it will shrink even more and won't expand under the heat and now what you should find when you put that wheel back on is that you have a much smoother um, movement but also look all of that side slop is virtually eliminated so that is the next mod and a very worthwhile one in the box you would get if you can see here i'll put them out here this is the pack of bracing wires and also there are some springs now these are all well and good they're good little wires as you can see there however they add quite a lot of vibration and additional weight same with the springs they're not uh, in any way functional there's the springs um, they're just purely for aesthetics. So as we did on the Gloucester Gladiator, you can use uh, like uh, this is 0.5, so 0.5 or up to a one millimeter elastic string to replicate the same effect that these um, uh, metal wires would have given. So not only are you saving the weight, you're also saving all that zzz vibration on the airframe. So I'm going to assemble the whole model now, and what we do, what we'll do when we get back to the field, you'll see it in its finished state, and I'll be able to show you fully. Uh, the uh, the rigging wire trick Okay, final mod tech Monday tip for assembling the uh, the slow poke you will need this is the spa quite substantial It's a composite uh, plywood uh, Construction, but it is too tight. You will need to sand off a, um, a Layer of the ply that's uh, on this uh, on this back side do it on the back of both and then once you do you'll see that the, uh, the spar slides in as it should because you want it to slide in well because you don't want to be fiddling around trying to get this wing together when you've got glue on here and uh, that glue is already setting so make sure you dry fit your spar before you glue the wing together that's the uh, final mod and the mod being you will need to sand back the uh, <laughs> my daughter there in camera you will need to sand back the uh, the spar to make a, um, a nice nice fit there but once you've done that of course it's good to go Thank you. In focus, yes, here we are. So we are back on the outside bench now. That was uh, going through in my workshop and I will apologize because again, it is a workshop, it's not a studio, but hopefully those points were clear. Talking you through all the changes I made on the uh, slow poke right out the box. It's a great value for money product. Right now, I think actually as I film this, it's on sale. So if you want to take advantage of that price difference, definitely jump on that while stocks last. The modifications out the box are easy and straightforward and that's always the point with these Modtech Monday uh, videos. Um, that being said, with that little bit of extra time, you get a far more efficient and smoother working model. Now one thing that I didn't mention uh, or didn't show in the workshop, but I can show you now if I turn the camera, I did add a windscreen and I think that looks really quite effective and what this is, this is the back off of one of our two-part epoxy um, packaging and I just cut it out to the shape I thought I wanted. I uh, held it in front of a heat source, like a hairdryer, just to make it a bit more malleable. And then I pinched it in place to form the shape. Then I glued it down, then I painted. And actually, if you look, take a look further back, it's a really nice little subtle difference. And uh, I like the aesthetics that that brings. So that's it for this Mod Tech Monday. You'll see a little bit of footage of it um, flying at the end of this video, but if you want to see, uh, it's, uh, see the Slowpoke flying in its full glory, uh, we are doing a flight demo video. If it's not already live, it will definitely be linked underneath this video, so please check that out. Again, here with the Mod Tech Monday for the Slowpoke. Worthwhile tips, very easy to do, and you should do it as soon as you get the box before you assemble it. That's uh, definitely part of the advice here so thank you very much for watching please look out for more more tech mondays and tech tip tuesdays and flight demos and everything else coming from uh, us here at hobby king please like comment and subscribe and i do mean it with the comments because we love reading those really appreciate that and i'll see you at some point soon here on hobbyking.com bye bye
Thank you.